Welcome back to Gabriel Speaks with Lynn and Father Anthony. And today I'm going to talk about my forthcoming surgeries. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I'm very conscious about, how, about making the sign of the cross. My son told me I looked like I was playing a guitar in one of our videos. I was doing something similar. The lazy, the, the lazy one. Anyway, uh, on Wednesday, I will be undergoing uh, next surgery, um, which I've kind of put off for quite a while. And I'm glad he's put it off. <laughs> and you can hear it in my voice that there's something going on. Um, I have to have a fusion of the, of the, of the discs. And we can't really hide the fact that it's been a source of stress. I mean, it's been brought, it's been brought to our attention by a friend, but uh, the stress part, uh, but it's there. What do you mean? Well, I mean, this surgery has been, we've been talking about it for a while, but, but the two of us are veterans with surgery. I mean, both of us are, are cancer survivors and, and, and whatever, but each time, you put your hands yourself into someone else's hands. You know you're really in God's hands. I mean, the surgeon. You you hope the the God guides the surgeon's hand. You hope that. Uh, I mean, you know that God guides the surgeon's hand. That you have to know it. You have to. If you don't know it, then you will go into that surgery feeling frightened. Um, I'm, a, I'm a bit stressed about it. Because my daughter has made me stress. Well, she, she had it, and yeah, right. She she's had a similar uh, surgery, and it's not about the surgery that you were stressed. It was about the recovery. I'm thinking about the surgery as well. Um, you know, and we're the recovery. we're not spring chickens. You know, we're not spring chickens. I'm going to be eighty in a couple of weeks. And each time you each time you undergo anesthesia, it's it's more difficult on your body. Yeah. And at the same time, if there is stress, we kind of it's kind of on the down low uh, because we both of us have been kind of blithe uh, blithe spirits thinking about it, you know. Okay, you're going to go. What happens, happens. <laughs> you're in God's hands. What else can you say? And the nub of it is that I have to, I had spinal surgery in November, and they have to go back in six weeks after this surgery and remove a growth that's pressing on my spine. And one of the, I feel a little bad because my nephews are having a celebration of life for my brother that passed away from COVID not too long ago. And they're naming a building after him. He was very involved with gymnastics and sports at the Syracuse University and the high school where he taught for many, many, many years. Uh, and I won't be able to be there in Syracuse to celebrate with them. And it just means that, in a way, because it's hard to travel anymore, that's my, my last chance I'm going to be able to see everybody. Because traveling from here back east is really tough. You don't know that it's your last chance to see anybody. That's that's kind of a doubt. You, you you feel you. My nephew said, after this memorial for my brother, 
they never want to go back to Syracuse again. They want to close that chapter. Why? I don't know why. Well, your great niece has mentioned coming out, coming out to visit us. So they can always come out. If they want to close the Syracuse chapter, they don't want to go back. There won't be very much for them to go back to anymore. I mean, their, fa their grandfather isn't there. Their father isn't there. And fine. But that doesn't mean you, you, won't see, you don't have a chance to see them. They're certainly welcome to visit us, to visit us here. Who wanted to come and visit us? Aubrey. At one point, she, wa she wanted... I know, she wanted to come. <laughs> She wanted to come when you were dealing with cancer. Right. And we just couldn't handle it. I Actually, we could, well, we couldn't handle the extra. I, um, well, she was bringing her kids. Yeah, that, that, was, that was the case. And when you're going through uh, cancer treatment, you can't stand noise. Well, it depends. Yeah, you're right. I was. Of any kind. But, you know, some years ago, I had multiple surgeries in one week and, and ended up in a coma for six weeks uh, and then later kidney failure and the only thing that ever got me through all of that was faith and humor because so many crazy things happened and I had, to, I had to laugh at myself in order to cope without getting upset you and listen to that we're in, the house, we're, in the, we're in the hands of God. But you listen to a lot of, of spiritual things on tape. You listen to church music, which was very, which was you found very soothing, and I found it very soothing for you. Um, listening to church music, sometimes listening to yourself. When I was <laughs> when I was taking chemotherapy, which was six months long. I had a, I had a, a player, and I played. Uh, there's this one one nun in Lebanon, Sister Kiruz, with some instrument instrumentation, and she chanted the hymns. Her voice was so soothing, and I had it in my ear twenty four seven. Because I thought having some, I had in forays, uh, 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 Requiem and Mozart, I had them all the time playing because I felt that I have a negative thing in, in my body with chemo killing cancer. I needed something positive to combat the, ne the negative and to help me get through it. And that's something I would recommend to everybody. Those periods when you, when, when you were feeling when sometimes the chemo would affect your character or affect your mood, um, you, were always, you were always soothed by church music or, some, or sometimes, sometimes it's, uh, some sort of sacred, path, sacred reading. Um, that you were listening to. I don't remember what it was, so, you, so we, can't really, we can't really recommend it to you, but, but readings from the Bible, there, there are all sorts of those that, that people can, can subscribe to online. I would, read the, I, would, I would read the Psalms. The Psalms speak to the human suffering and the cry to God for, for help. And you watched and you watched a lot of funny movies on TV. I'm not that necessarily TV. His favorite was being there, the the movie that starred Peter Sellers that was based on a short story by Jersey Kaczynski. It's so funny. Well, he, you la you laughed out loud. You laughed out loud more than you ever did before you had before you were taking get, getting chemo. And Zover the Greek. Oh, well, that was. So it wasn't necessary. It was very life affirming. Zorba the Greek is, Zorba the Greek is very life affirming, um, which cousin Sakis is not generally. And, I, and I've been telling people, with relatives that are having that are under who are suffering from COVID, um, 
to make sure that they play sacred music in their room, be it in the hospital or being at home. To have that flow of music. So I just think it's a uh, um, an important, important spiritual element to get one through trauma. Yeah, it's trauma. It's not. It's trauma to your body uh, to be cut into from an outside source, and it's trauma psychologically, knowing that while you're under anesthesia, you're you know, like you're in a helpless state, you're almost dead. They can bring you to almost death. Um, and it's life, it's life well, affirming. My biggest worry is this one next to me. This one. Having to cope, cope with me <laughs> during my recovery. Because I'm a terrible recoverer. If you know, uh, the, the he's last a difficult surgery. patient. You're a difficult patient. <laughs> well, the last surgery I had, I fell out of bed, and I smashed the the muscle between my ribs, and I couldn't lift him up. And we had help. We had we had uh, my kids. No, I'm thinking of the one before that. There have been several where we had someone staying at the house that got on your nerves, but at least he was able to help and get you to bed. So this is another new, another experience. I thought after all my cancer stuff that I would never have to undergo any more surgery. And here I am at 80, undergoing more surgery. And you know, they do say with older people, you have to be careful with the anesthesia because if, if you're under too long or get too much, you can end up in the Looney Tunes, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> you what? I mean, yeah, you can end up in the Looney Tunes, I guess. <laughs> she just, just has a vision in her mind of you going Looney Tune, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, I will ask for all your prayers. As Mother Teresa would always say, when she would write somebody who was suffering, she always would say, bon courage. Now you're saying that to yourself too. <laughs> so now I'm saying that to me. Courage, man. And I, and he's right. I do need a little, I do, I need your prayers too. Because the caregiver sometimes um, may get a slipper thrown at them or you never know. Uh, no way, so, I'm the caregiver. Pardon me? The weight is on the caregiver. After the surgery, the weight is on the caregiver. Yeah. She always wants to throttle me. <laughs> it's hard. I, I have to pray for patience because some, sometimes I'm not patient and I'm angry and then I feel guilty because a person can't help how they feel when they're sick. A person can't, I mean, you, can, you can't get control of it. You're, you're in a, a weakened state. And so, as the slipper goes flying by, I'll remember that next time. <laughs> well, I will be careful not to throw anything. This time. It happens, I'm telling you. I the best throw anything at you. That you remember. Well, when you, when you were do, having chemo and you... They, you were you were stoked up on on steroids. They you were taking that decadron, and they were giving you much more than they should have. They realized after a while, and you were kind of like the Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like the Hulk. Mm. So my good friends, <laughs> God be with all of you, and I ask you to say a prayer for both us. of us. And uh, we're going to do another, another, another Q and A session following this. In the name of the Father and of the Son 
Let the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button uh, on, on your on your iPad, your iPhone, or whatever. Put also the subscribe button. Please subscribe and push the notification so you'll know when uh, when we do these videos when they come out. Thumbs up, subscribe. Notification. Remember those three things. And I'd be very grateful. God bless you.